Ophir Optronics is the global leader in precision laser measurement with over 35 years of product innovation, including Ophir laser power and energy meters, Spiricon camera-based beam profile systems, and Photon's scanning slit beam profile technology. Today's demanding laser applications require fast, easy, and accurate measurements, as well as display and recording of laser parameters. In this tutorial, we will demonstrate how Ophir's Star Lab turns your PC into a laser multi-channel measurement workstation, allowing you to read, log, and do math operations on multiple measurement sources. In this demo, we have two sources connected, but Star Lab can measure up to 10 or more sources at once. We are simulating a changing laser source with an oscillating light source illuminating two Ophir power sensors. Let's now demonstrate how Star Lab turns your PC into a laser multi-channel measurement workstation. Star Lab can take inputs from various kinds of sources at once. Here we have an Ophir 3A thermal sensor connected to a Vega meter and the meter in turn connected via USB to our PC. And here we have a PD300 photodiode sensor connected via our Juno PC interface and USB cable to our PC. Now that we are connected to the PC, let's open the StarLab software. As you can see, the two devices attached to the PC appear on the screen. Let's start by working with a single source, the 3A sensor. We'll select the 3A by clicking in its checkbox. We can either show each source in a separate window or all in one window. Since we have one source, let's click on Separated. This opens the measurement screen. We can adjust sizes by dragging the window frames. The numerical measurement value of the selected channel is displayed here in this box. A graph of the measurements is shown at the same time in this area. The default graph is a line plot and the default time scale is 5 minutes. Let's adjust the power scale to fit the powers being measured. Let's set the maximum power to 30 milliwatts. We can now clearly see the graph of the power measured. Let's also set the time scale to say 1 minute so the graph will go faster. By clicking on the Graph Select button, we can display other graph types as well, bar chart, histogram, or needle. In the statistics area here, various statistics are displayed, minimum, maximum, average, standard deviation, and the number of readings that were over range. We can see the full information on the sensor at the top of the screen here. All the various settings and functions available with the sensor can be controlled from StarLab. Here we choose to measure power or energy. Here we choose the correct wavelength range. Here we set up the power scale. Let's change it from 30 milliwatts to 300 milliwatts. We also have various functions available. Let's open the functions area. If we click on offset, the present reading is subtracted from the power reading. If we put, say, 10 in the scale factor box and click, then the reading is 10 times the previous reading and so on with the other functions. If we click here on Save, then these settings are saved. Now let's work with two sources. We'll open StarLab again. We see the two sources. To open all the sources together, let's click Device and Sensors and select Together. As you can see, there is now a channel box for both sensors. We now adjust the setup for each channel at a time. First, we'll click on A to focus on that channel. Note that the Y-axis values, the graph setup area, and the statistics now all pertain to channel A. The box colors also identify the channel. Let's choose the 30 milliwatt range so the reading will not be so small. We'll leave the other settings the same. Now we show both graphs on the same screen. If we want to see two separate screens, then we click split over here. If 
we don't want to see a particular graph, we unclick the box here. Now let's look at how the math channel operates. Let's click the Add Math Channel button to create a math channel and corresponding graph display. The default is A over B as shown. Let's define instead our own function. We click on the function icon and then define the function we want. We now have three active graphs. Now let's close down StarLab, but before doing so, let's set up the configuration for next time. Let's click on Options, then Preferences. The default is to show the devices and set things up each time. Let's say we want to remember the present setting and start up in the same format. So then let's click Open Last Configuration before we close down the program. Here, we close the program, open it again, and get back to the same configuration. Now let's see how to log numerical data. Let's click on the Log Setup icon to open the Log Settings window. The default here is to log one screen of data. We'll unclick it and choose Stop After Measurements with the default here to stop after 100 readings. Click OK to exit the screen. Now let's click the Data Log Start button to start saving the 100 measurements into the log file. The progress bar fills up until the log is complete. Note that the logging settings are independent of the settings of the graph screen. The logging is finished, but the graph continues. Now let's click on the File menu and open the file to view the logged measurements in StarLab format. Note that the graph is auto-scaled to fit the values shown. Let's close it here. We can also click on File and choose Open File as Text to see the measured value as raw text. Here are the two data files. We can also open it into Excel or some other program. We can also download data stored in our power meters to StarLab. In this Vega here, we have some stored data. Let's click on channel B, which is attached to the Vega. Now click on the upload data icon here, and we see a number of files to choose from. We choose one of them and click open. The file downloads. To see the file, click File, Open, select the file, and open it. So now we've had a brief tour of StarLab. We see how versatile it is, able to work with multiple channels and combine them. Yet it is easy and intuitive to use.